Hey, I'm Nick Boy, and welcome to Pocket for Monday, the 18th of January. Today on the show, Romero's back, why video game movies are always awful, without exception, and why you are personally killing small businesses. All right, here's what's been making headlines. Phil Spencer has shut down rumors that Microsoft had planned to turn off Xbox 360 servers this November. A lot of fuss relates to a speech delivered back in 2013 by Microsoft's marketing executive, Yusuf Mehdi. At the time, he said that the company would support the Xbox 360 for at least three more years. Well, that three years expires this November, but Phil Spencer's response to fears on Twitter was succinct. The rumors are not true, and Phil Spencer has never lied in his life. Mo Yang has announced that Cobalt will be launching on February 2nd. Mo Yang's first third party game was due to come out late last year, but was delayed in order to give developer Oxeye more time to prep the game for its launch on PC, Xbox 360, and Xbox One. It has been five years since the game was originally announced. Over the weekend, John Romero released his first Doom level since 1995. The industry legend was one of the founding members of id Software and was a key designer of Doom and Doom 2. So for him to release his first level in 21 years is exciting and overdue. The map, called E1M8, can be downloaded from the links below. And finally, it looks like The Division may feature a much smaller New York than we'd hoped. Despite the fact that a number of preview videos show off boroughs like Brooklyn, creative designer Magnus Janssen has stated that the game will only feature Midtown Manhattan when it launches. While we know players will be stuck in the heart of the city for at least a few months after the game comes out, the developers have confirmed that DLC packages will come out. And while nothing is confirmed, hopefully that means new boroughs somewhere down the line. For your cash money! I'm joined now by Linji to discuss our last news story. Filming has wrapped on the upcoming Assassin's Creed movie due to release this December. The film features actors Michael Fassbender and Marion Cotillard and is directed by Justin Kurzel, which gives it a very slight chance to not be shit. Linji, will it be shit? No, it's gonna be the greatest film ever made. Liar! No, it's gonna be good. It's really? Be good. Just because of the pedigree of people, um, you know, producing it and making it. Mm -hmm. So we've got Michael Fassbender, Marion Cotillard, Justin Kozel, mm -hmm. Adam. I just said all those names. Yeah, Adam Akapal, who is actually filming it. The famous um, Adam Akapal. Who shot True Detective. Oh shit! Brilliant. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's good. So it's gonna be a good film, yep. no matter what. Who's who's writing it? That's what I want to know. I have no idea. Right? Yeah, because that's <laughs> not important. No, it's a, it's a video game film. Like, who cares who writes it? I will say that I have the highest hopes mm. for the Assassin's Creed film and actually for the World of Warcraft film because I like Duncan Jones. The problem most of the time with most video game adaptions, and like we've had Tomb Raider, Doom, Resident Evil, Mortal Kombat, Final Fantasy: Spirits Within, Super Mario Brothers, to name but a few. Like I figured, the problem is you're taking you're taking you're adapting something that wasn't focused on story in the first place, most of the time, except for Final Fantasy, and that's just a shit story. And you are putting it in the blockbuster system, which notoriously doesn't really care about the story most of the time, and then expecting something good to come out of it. I agree, but mm -hmm. I feel like with Assassin's Creed, yep. just with the type of films that Justin Kozel have made in the past, yeah. like well, which are he's, uh, so he's made Snowtown. Which oh, I think yeah. was yeah, yeah. his like kind of big film. <laughs> yeah, very, very raw. Um, and he also made the very art house um, adaptation of Macbeth last year. Right, with with, with Michael Fassbender and, and Marion Cotillard. Cartier. So yeah. they're like this little trio. Yeah. Now. This little gang. This little gang. So they're gonna make movies forever. Yeah. I, I feel like. Um, but he's a very art house director. Yeah. So I think for him, he he doesn't really necessarily focus on the story per se. It's, it's more about the characters and the mood and the tone. So it's going to be a very, very art house Assassin's Creed. It's just going to be Michael Fassbender mm -hmm. in his robes walking around some European city. Slow-mo, time-lapse, yep. you know, lens flares, yeah. all that stuff. It's going to be beautiful. We actually had someone write in with a talk through discussion point for this. Uh, CJ McKenzie said, is there any merit in adapting video uh, games to movies in the first place? And why do so many fail? What games do you think would make a good movie? Uh, do you have opinions on any of that? I think, yes, there is merit, yep. but only if you explore um, things outside of the game. Yep. I don't think there's merit in just adapting what happens in the game. Yes. Like, for example, a Last of Us film yeah. would be crap. 
Like if it's just the game, mm -hmm. right? Because you could just play through that game and it's going to give you that storyline. But you could argue the same for books. Like books, you go, you make a faithful adaptation of a book. You just go, we'll just read the book. But it's not visual though. That is true. And so you don't have vision and audio in the book. Yeah. So in interpreting a book... Except an audio book. I got you there. Audiobook. Bazinga. Uh, All right, that's all the time we have. Yeah, no, that's yeah. totally true. Um, it, what I think would be great is having, uh, like, creative adaptations of things. At least Mortal Kombat tried something. With I love the Mortal weird Kombat. sort of, like, taking people from different realms yeah. and putting them all together. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on now to the best part of the show. It's Thing of the Day. Thing of the Day. The Super Mario Maker community have created a wealth of weird and challenging levels. And also a bunch of trolls. Thing of the day. And now it's talk through time where you suggest a topic and we talk through it. Today's topic comes in from Makolicious who says, with the increasing number of people gaming on PC and purchasing their games digitally, do you think that game retailers will stay relevant in the coming future? Do you still buy games in brick and mortar stores? Occasionally. Or anything in brick and mortar stores? No, I actually hate shopping in real life. Yeah. I love shopping online, yeah. but I hate you shopping in real life. You love buying things yeah. and owning things. Exactly. You're hideously materialistic. Absolutely. But you don't like having to go to any sort of effort to get that stuff. Not just, it's, it's not the effort. It's the like, I will I will go to effort to buy things online. Yeah, right. You know, searching. I will find yeah. coupons. Mm. You know, I, I will find things. If I could 3D print my clothes yeah. from like an online template, yes. I would love to do that. Yes. I think that would be brilliant. I hate shopping in real life Don't because of the people. That. Yes, they're the worst. Oh, you are the worst. You are, <laughs> you are all the worst. People are the worst. You are so loud. You always bump into me. Kids. Kids. Toddlers. Prams. I, I don't buy anything in brick yeah. and mortar stores anymore. I get groceries delivered. Everything is either digital or delivered to my house. Yeah. Um, but not everyone is as lucky as us, uh, mainly with our internet connection. Like yeah. so many people in the country are obviously still going to stores. Um, I think that the games, games heading in a digital way is, you know, it's happening and it's happening more and more. But I still think we're there's going to be a long death of the brick and mortar store. It's not going to. Be well, that's why I still buy games in stores because my internet connection is so bad. Yeah. Like if I have to download a 40 gig game, yeah, it's going to take me five days. You know what so you should do? What? Do it here on the ABC dime. Yeah, Download it on this sick pipe, yeah. and then uh, and T1? then take it home. T1 connection. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's fine. Um, what I also love um, is buying secondhand games occasionally. Like right. If I haven't played it. You right. Know, so go. you're still in that secondhand game market. I, I love the secondhand market. Um, I buy secondhand books all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, secondhand DVDs and games and. Um, I know, you know, that money doesn't actually go to the original author or distributor. Yeah, it's fine. It They're not watching that. Yeah, it's fine. Um, but it, that saves me a lot of money. Yep. So it means I can buy more stuff. Are you trading stuff in? Um, not really, no. Because I'm a collector. Yeah, right. Like, I love just having stuff. I mean, that's the other thing. It's a small subset, but the collector community still want the physical things. The other thing about the sort of... Uh, retail brick and mortar versus digital is that game consoles still need to be sold so it's it's still i still like i feel like we're still a long way away from the majority of game consoles being bought online so they need to be stocked somewhere they need to be stocked in a shop and those stores will not stock them unless they also stock games because they're actually making way more money on games than the just one-off purchase of a console. So as long as consoles are being, still being sold in big shops and little ones, you're still going to be getting games there and people are still going to be buying them. I think it's also the experience of walking into a shop and, and to be able to see the titles, even though I, I hate walking into shops and I hate the yeah. lighting and, and the posters and yeah. oh, all that paraphernalia. You're the um, worst. Yeah, it's the, it's the worst. I, as, as a kid, though, I loved going to those stores and actually playing the games. Yep. And so when a new game would come out, you know, they'd put it on the consoles and I'd walk in and be like, oh, it's, it's Guitar Hero 3, you know, it's, it's a Leaves game and I, yeah. and I will be there for four hours just playing Guitar Hero whilst my parents are shopping. Yeah, like that's, it's like a free babysitting. Uh, well, I think that by the sounds of it then, brick and mortar shops are going to be around for a while, but I do think ultimately they're going to go. Like ultimately all that stuff is going to go and it will just be a super niche collector sort of yes. area, if anything. It'll be like how vinyl's back. 
Yeah. Like physical games will be back and retro and Goose will buy them and pretend he's cool. Yeah. I think the the other big issue is, you know, where the Australian dollar is at. Yep. You know, depending on how yeah. high or how low it is. That's a really then good point, that's, actually. that's going to really affect the retail because at the moment the Australian dollar is, what, 68, 69 cents. Yeah. Um, and it might keep going down. And I think that's going to be really beneficial for Australian retailers. Yep. Because you're going to do the maths, um, you know, compared to overseas or yeah. online sales. And it's, it's going to be like, oh, it's actually cheaper if I walk into a store and, and buy them. Yeah, or, and for a while there was the advantage of, like, you bought something online digitally, it was cheaper than the physical yep. version. But if that's not the case, then you go, oh, maybe I do just want to keep the f actual physical thing so I always have it anyway. Yep. Yeah, that is a good point. All right, that's it for the talk through. Are you still buying your games at brick and mortar shops? You've you gone fully digital like I have? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're there on the internet, where you should be instead of in the shop, check out Good Game on Facebook, YouTube, and iView. Want to meet fellow Pocketeers? Then join the Pocketeers Facebook group and Steam group. You can follow Good Game on Twitter at Good Game TV, follow Pocket at NickBoy, at Pierreth, and at GG, at Monkey. She's El Geology. There are links to everything I just said in the description below. Today's Thing of the Day graphic was made by Rebecca Lyons Wright. Thank you, Rebecca. Have you made a thing? Send it in. Until tomorrow, Nick Boy out. Lin G out. And remember, you're the worst. The worst. The worst. You're killing tiny families that have little shops. You're a tiny family member.